Hi, today we're going to talk about hypothermia. Hypothermia is the drop of core body temperature, and all year round you should be thinking about hypothermia. So we're going to talk about just the signs and symptoms and the treatment. So if you're out on a trip and you notice someone getting cold, um, you might notice that they start saying that they feel cold, they are cold. You might also notice that they start to shiver. They might have these little bit of fumbling. You know, they have a little zipper or toggle, and they're really having difficulty with it. Um, they might be just sluggish, confused, or just a little bit out of it. The mild patient is someone we can help, and they can help themselves. Now, the moderate patient, that's the patient who is uncontrollably shivering. Their level of responsiveness has dropped so much that they really cannot help themselves. They're not able to drink or eat at this point, um, and asking them to exercise would be unrealistic. Their gross motor skills are dropping, and they're probably fumbling and stumbling around. This person definitely needs help. The severe hypothermic patient is someone who has stopped shivering. Their body has given up and said, hey, you know what? Shivering is using a lot of energy. I'm just going to stop. Their pulse rate and heart rate are going to drop so low that it might be really hard to find. This patient, we're going to take their pulse and heart rate for one whole minute instead of our regular 30 because it might be so hard to detect. Um, this person is going to be unresponsive. Often, if we are with people all day long, we will see the progression of hypothermia and we can intervene early on. So, how do you intervene? First, take an inventory of how folks are doing every once in a while on a trail. Or if you bump into someone and you notice they look cold, you should intervene. Hypothermia can be life-threatening. So let's talk about our treatment strategies. First, let's get them out of the environment. Is it cold? Is it raining? Is it snowing or sleeting? A lot of heat can be saved by just setting up a tent and getting inside, going into a cabin, or maybe ducking into a tree. Getting them dry. Often in the winter, we tolerate you know, a little bit of wetness, a little bit of sweat, but any layer that is wet, we want to remove from that patient. Because remember, that wetness is going to pull the heat away from our patient faster than a dry layer. Uh, we want to warm them up, and we can do this several ways. Um, one is to add heat. Uh, we're going to make a hypo wrap for these patients if they need it. Um, that would be your moderate and severe patients will definitely need a hypo wrap. So we will put them in the sleeping bag in a tarp, um, and we can boil some hot water, pour it into some Nalgene's, protect it with some socks and put them in the armpits, on the stomach, in the groin, um, trying to warm up our core body temperature. The patient would love, if you have a spare one, to put it in their feet, because their feet are probably pretty cold. Um, exercising, the only patient we can realistically ask to exercise is our mild patient. The other folks won't be in a, in a position that they'll be able to help themselves. Eating um, something with high calories um, and a little bit of sugar would be great. Again, you know, our patient has to be responsive, awake, and oriented, and able to kind of eat on their own in a sitting up position for this to occur. Cheese, hot chocolate, hot chocolate and cheese, hot chocolate and butter, whatever you have in your backpack, um, sugar is going to get on board really quick. And it's going to get that patient to have a little bit of energy. And then the fats are going to be really helpful because um, that will get into their body and start metabolizing and getting them warm. Um, the hypo wrap um, is the next topic we will talk about later in another video. Um, but you can get them into a hypo wrap. And that will be a little burrito-like thing for your patient. Um, and you're going to have them hang out there until they're not now, one myth uh, that people always ask about hypothermia is, is it beneficial to put two people in a sleeping bag to warm, you know, that one patient up? The answer is no. Um, having a very, very cold person and a very, very warm patient next to each other is not going to help. It is actually going to make the warm person much colder. 
And most of us have sleeping bags designed for one person. So it's unrealistic to stick two bodies in a one person sleeping bag. Again, um, the mild patient can help themselves. And this is something if we identify early, uh, we can prevent a bigger problem in the world. The moderate and severe patient are going to be needing our help. The only person that needs to go out is your severe patient or a moderate or mild patient that can't recover um, with some assistance or your help. Again, as always, prevention to hypothermia is preferred. So check the weather before you go, dress appropriately, and watch the video on preventing winter, winter emergencies.